we've been talking a lot of horse race politics on this podcast for the last, last few episodes. So I'm really happy to introduce a break to that tedium. Today, we are joined by Jordan Charrington, whom you probably know as the co-founder of Status Coup, does really important investigative journalism. And if you aren't already following the Status Coup YouTube channel and following his work, you should definitely rectify that now. Welcome to Bad Faith, Jordan. Hey, thanks so much for having me. So specifically, you're here today to talk about a recent article that you published on Monday in The Guardian uh, titled Revealed, the Flint water poisoning charges that never came to light. But before we get into the details of what's going on with these, these uh, the current effort to hold somebody accountable here in Flint, can you back us up for those of us who maybe followed the Flint water crisis initially, but have lost track of it over the last eight years, remind listeners how we ended up in a situation where there was this massive uh, water poisoning in Flint, Michigan. Sure. So uh, basically Flint, like Detroit and a lot of other uh, one time, you know, really historic, uh, economically vibrant cities. Uh, By the 2010s, Flint was like a a dead carcass. I mean, it was just economically depleted. A lot of people leaving the city, um, nearly bankrupt, actually. So uh, Flint in 2014, uh, it had no credit rating. It was broke. Um, It was actually $13 million in deficit. And uh, state of Michigan officials and city officials, as well as landowners and some banks, uh, they had the brilliant idea. Uh, Let's create a brand new water system for Flint to join. Uh, Flint had gotten its water from Detroit uh, for 50 years without without an issue as far as what? Yeah, Lake Huron, which is Great Lakes water, some of the purest, uh, most glacial water on Earth. Um, So basically, a brand new water pipeline was constructed that went on the same exact parallel pathway as the existing Detroit water pipeline that Flint got its water from. Problem was, Flint was broke. I mean, it didn't have money to join a new water system. So uh, as our story talks about, uh, which we'll get into, uh, Flint basically borrowed $85 million to join this new water system. While this new water system was being constructed, the the KWA water pipeline, um, the state and the city put Flint on the Flint River temporarily while this new water system was being built. The Flint River, anyone who lived in Flint, I mean, General Motors dumped their waste in there for a century. Uh, A lot of waste was, it was a dumping ground. And essentially the the state environmental department failed to add the proper chemicals into the water treatment process. You know, water is treated with chemicals to make it safe uh, for people to drink. That's water from rivers and, and things like that. They didn't add the proper chemicals into the Flint River water. The water plant uh, that is supposed to it treats the water. It was it was it was dilapidated. It it needed sixty million dollars in upgrades to effectively treat the Flint River water. Those upgrades were nowhere near complete. So between failing to add the proper chemicals into the Flint River water, the water treatment plant being completely substandard, they flipped the switch uh, almost eight years ago in April, and w- within week within maybe maybe two or three weeks, residents started receiving brown water, discolored water couple months, uh, you have residents getting rashes, losing hair, children, uh, images uh, of, of rashes, things like that. But essentially, at the time, the Republican governor, uh, Rick Snyder, and uh, city of Flint officials basically told residents, you know, don't believe your lying skin. Uh, mm-hmm. Don't believe, you know, the br- brown water, it's fine. For 18 months, uh, so April 2014, all the way to October 2015, the state and the city basically covered it up. Uh, emails, other information came out that show uh, the Republican governor, his administration and city of Flint officials knew uh, that there was high levels of lead in that water, uh, high levels of bacteria, uh, Legionnaires, which is a deadly waterborne uh, disease that travel is created through water. Uh, but they basically covered it up until it, it was just too big an issue for them to cover up. And I've stayed on the story for years. Um, Last year with The Intercept, I broke that Governor Snyder lied. He knew about the toxic water 16 months earlier than he told the public, 16 months earlier than he told Congress. I think perjury is still a crime. Uh, And several other key parts that show a really, really in-depth, widespread cover-up 
of the poisoning of Flint. All right. So part of what you're discussing in this new article is the fact that some specific uh, financial charges that have been brought uh, by the previous uh, administration have been recently dropped without explanation. Can you walk through what the root of those causes were first and foremost, uh, root, sure. uh, the root of those charges rather? Sure. So if people don't know, there were there there were two investigations. There was one that started in 2016, right right around when the media was like in Flint covering this. So that was launched under, at the time, uh, the Republican Attorney General of Michigan. So he hired a special prosecutor. So I don't think like Robert Mueller, but for Flint. So uh, there was a special prosecutor leading the Flint investigation from 2016 to 2018. They charged 15 state of Michigan and city of Flint officials with with involuntary manslaughter, misconduct in office, and financial fraud. The new attorney general, Dana Nessel, she's a Democrat. She, as a candidate, was basically crapping on the investigation, basically previewing that she was going to overhaul the entire thing. She gets in, she fires uh, the original prosecutors and investigators. Uh, Our reporting in this story uh, learned that that original team that the current attorney general purged they were on the verge of filing racketeering charges, uh, RICO. And RICO, uh, you might know this as a lawyer, was created in the 70s uh, to go after organized crime. It's used for other things too, but it's been uh, gone after organized crime, mafia figures, things like that. They were building an aggressive racketeering case for financial fraud that led to Flint even using the Flint River. Uh, I briefly described that, that new water system Flint, again, was broke and had no credit rating. It could not legally borrow more money to join a new water system. Uh, When I say join, fund part of the construction of this new water pipeline. But because of a fraudulent environmental emergency, Flint was allowed an exception to get around its borrowing limit and join this new water system. So those prosecutors and those investigators were building a racketeering case to go after the state officials who were complicit in this allegedly fraudulent, specifically a bond deal. Uh, But when the new attorney general came in, she purged that team. Uh, She did not follow through on those, uh, that RICO case. And in other instances, already filed financial fraud charges that had already been filed, she dropped those two. So the story really digs in deep to the RICO case that never was, the other financial charges that were dropped, and really kind of following the money of why did one investigation why was one investigation aggressively going for the financial fraud and the current administration under the attorney general, by all appearances, basically let it go? So this is what was so interesting to me about the story is that I hadn't really I don't remember learning a lot about how the city was able to finance the building of that second pipe, which is the root of the fraud allegation here. So there was a state issued environmental order that allowed the city to get around a debt limit, you write, and access $85 million in funding that was earmarked for an environmental calamity. In this case, the cleanup of a local lime sludge pit. So the slime, this lime sludge pit was used as a pretext to get money that was then used to build the pipeline, but then that was insufficient money to also make the water treatment plant sufficient to treat the water that they were going to have to use from the Flint River in the interim. Is that right? Yeah. So basically, a lot of people wanted this pipeline, (laughs) like Wall Street, landowners, investors, city officials. They wanted this pipeline. They used, they said, well, we were getting the water from Detroit and Detroit kept raising its prices over the years. So let's create our own water destiny and and have, have our own water system separate from Detroit. But the, the actual fraud, like you said, was basically uh, they, they were about to miss construction season for this new pipeline, and they needed uh, the county, Genesee County, which Flint is part of. They needed Flint to join the pipeline so that Flint, uh, could, Flint could pay the rest of construction because they didn't have enough money to pay. It was like 300 something million dollars to complete the entire new water system. So Flint, under the only way to get around that borrowing limit was if there's an environmental emergency. So basically a, a, a scam emergency was created, the cleanup of a local lime pit uh, and the money that was earmarked for that, uh, it actually didn't, I mean, that was relatively inexpensive. They basically backdoored $85 million for Flint to join this new water system. But it, it, inside the details, um, in that 
in environmental order, they handcuffed Flint to using the Flint River while that new water system was uh, being built and uh, the Flint water plant to treat the water. The problem was the Flint water plant was a secondary water um, treatment thing. It was never used as a full-time water treatment um, operation. Mm. And the environmental order, that, that administrative order, it outlined that that plant needed $60 million in upgrades before treating the water. The problem was th they didn't have that money. So they already had to start paying the bond payments for the new water system. So state officials, city officials basically said, let's, you know, let's make the switch and hope for the best. And we know what happened. So that's the fraud. The fact that Flint should have never, Flint should have never had access to uh, borrowing that money to join the new water system. If they didn't have uh, $85 million to join that water system, they wouldn't have been using the Flint River because they would have never been joining that new water system. So there are a few things about this that are incredible. One is that in the story, you mentioned that other areas in the county weren't similarly tethered to having to use Flint River water while the pipeline was under construction. What is the rationale there? What what led to that kind of a decision? If if the rest of the county was using some other water source, why wasn't Flint similarly allowed to do so? I'm glad you asked that. So Flint was 12 to, uh, 12 to $13 million in deficit uh, in 2014. So losing $12 million a year. Their payments to Detroit was about $1 million a month. So that's, mm -hmm. 12, that's $12 million a year. So basically Flint, if they stopped using Detroit water uh, while the KWA pipeline was being constructed, they could have stayed on Detroit's system until this new pipeline was built. But if they stopped using Detroit water and they um, use the Flint River for free, theoretically for free, then they could have basically erase their entire $12 million deficit in one full swoop mm -hmm. by getting rid of that uh, $1 million a month payment to Detroit. Problem is Flint had to pay, start paying the bonds for the under construction pipeline. So they didn't have money to also pay Detroit. They'd be double paying for mm -hmm. to stay on Detroit and to pay the bonds for the KWA pipeline. So they basically cut corners and said, well, let's use our own river for free. But the problem was they couldn't safely use the river if they didn't make the upgrades to that water plant. <laughs> and they didn't yeah. make the upgrades to that water plant. So basically you had state and city officials essentially using the residents of Flint as guinea pigs um, to try and essentially save money, eliminate the deficit, and move to this new water system. Uh, and, you know, there was a lot of, uh, you know, I don't, I can't say if people intentionally did this knowing people were to get sick, but the state and city officials right away knew people were going to get, were new people were getting sick mm. and they looked the other way. The other element I just want to mention, Wall Street was involved in this. Mm. So that bond deal, uh, JP Morgan, Chase and Wells Fargo, they underwrote the bond deal for Flint to join that uh, KWA pipeline. So uh, Charlie LaDuff and me, who did the story, uh, we found out that if those RICO charges had gone forward, if this financial fraud had gone forward, not only does the state of Michigan potentially face hundreds of billions of dollars in liability because the state of Michigan signed off on the environmental calamity, mm -hmm. uh, but JP Morgan and Wells Fargo, as part of the bond deal, they were supposed they had to, they were supposed to ensure that the Flint water plant that those upgrades had been made. Mm. Uh, so you have liability all around both the state of Michigan and the banks who you know shockingly declined comment. That, that, that's incredible because also I mean how on earth did anyone get away with the basic bait and switch of saying we are using an emergency order for one stated purpose for a completely different purpose? I mean what what is the follow up on saying I'm going to use First of all, who granted $85 million to cl for a cleanup project that apparently only took a small fraction of that and then didn't follow up on how the remaining money was going to be used? That's the thing. And this goes into what the hell is the current attorney general doing? They didn't get away with it. So there were fraud charges filed against two state. So let me back up for a second. Sure. One of the most controversial parts of the whole entire water crisis Governor Rick Snyder had appointed unelected emergency managers to take over the city of Flint. 
He did it to Detroit and other uh, majority black cities, by the way. Uh, emergency managers took over, uh, took over uh, power over the elected mayor, over the elected city council. So Governor Snyder had appointed emergency managers in Flint, and they were involved with this phony uh, bond deal and this phony environmental emergency. So the original prosecution team, they had charged two of those emergency managers appointed by the Republican governor with financial fraud over this bond deal, technically the term uh, false pretenses mm. and, conspir and conspiracy to commit false pretenses. Mm. So there were actual charges over the financial fraud. When the new attorney general came in, and I, and I still haven't gotten an answer why, she fired the original team, which, you know, that's her prerogative, and she dropped those charges, the financial fraud charges. So technically, if there was continu continu continuity in the investigation, if the current attorney general had not basically purged the whole thing, um, there might be convictions by now for that financial fraud. The attorney general, her statement to me for this story was we pursued all viable all viable charges. I don't really know what that means. You have to wonder, how does one set of investigators and prosecutors find enough evidence to charge uh, with RICO, um, which is really very serious financial crimes, and this one doesn't follow through on it? The other thing, Brianna, is that original prosecution team, I reported this for The Intercept, they were gunning for involuntary manslaughter mm. against Governor Rick Snyder uh, after they were uh, fired. The current attorney general's team, they charged him with a misdemeanor. Mm. So all around, uh, and the people of Flint that I speak with feel this way, there's basically been kind of show justice, like the governor was charged with something, but a misdemeanor, even though my reporting has shown he knew for 16 months about the toxic water and he failed to notify the public. That was the basis of the involuntary manslaughter case that was being built. And they don't have any answers for why they dropped already filed financial charges against state officials and why they did not follow through on this RICO case, which again, this is not just Flint. There are bond deals funding a lot of the things going on around our country, uh, whether it's water, sewer systems, uh, transportation. A lot of those deals are being made through the issuance of bonds by, lo by states and cities. Uh, and in, in the case of Flint, this was old fashioned fraud and a scam that's basically been swept under the rug. I don't know the current attorney general's motivation. I see her on MSNBC now all the time mm. on January 6th stuff and, you know, saving democracy. Mm. Uh, I don't know. It seems like conveniently every time I break a Flint story, she starts going on national TV about unrelated stuff. Mm. But, you know, at the end of the day, what we're talking about is complicated. What's not complicated. An American city was poisoned eight years ago. They, there's been a massive government cover-up. I don't say this lightly. There is, I don't know of a bigger government cover-up this century. Mm -hmm. I mean, w because people died, people are still slowly dying. People don't realize that the full effects of heavy metal poisoning, it, it doesn't happen right away. It happens over several years. I talk to residents all the time. They're getting sicker by the year. Cancers that they have no family history for, liver disease, kidney failure, Parkinson's, all sorts of stuff people that did not have major health issues before this water switch. And basically between the Democratic Party, the Republican Party and the media, they've, they've basically just declared like mission accomplished, the water's safe, move on. And it's, it's not, it's still very much a crisis and no one has been held accountable eight years later. One of the things I really appreciate about status quo is that you not only do real investigative reporting, but that you're often on site in speaking to local members of community communities that are affected by these firsthand. And I was listening to an interview you did, I believe it was with Melissa Mays, who's also quoted in the article, who is a local activist and also mother who is detailing how the crisis has affected her personally and her health and the health of her children and her family. And it's, it's gripping. It's, it's horrifying. My neurologist told me when my seizures began um, that when you throw metals into an electrical system, that's why you don't put a fork in, a, in a, an electrical outlet, it causes things to go haywire. And your brain, it does what it can to work around it. So I'm on, I don't have epilepsy, but I got a seizure disorder. That's awesome to deal with. The hand tremors, the memory loss, um, 
the, the untreated, the, the layered ongoing trauma uh, and the moral injury of the city and state telling me, assuring me that the water was safe and fine. So I cooked with it and I gave it to my kids thinking I was doing the healthiest thing for my kids. Don't give them pop, don't give them this. But now I'm looking at my kids who don't have much for an immune system. They can't get really their white blood cell counts above four. They're tired all the time. They Their growth plates have pro closed prematurely, which means their growth plates in their neck that go all the way down to their, their um, feet. That a lot that open and are soft and spongy for you know a, between ages nine to fourteen and beyond um, that allow their ligaments and muscles to grow with their bones closed prematurely. So my sons are hunched over. They've had to go to through several rounds of physical therapy so somebody could pull and force their joints uh, or their 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 ligaments and their muscles to stretch. What I want to know is what are the politics of the situation? Is it to your point? That, they are con uh, that these financial interests are concerned about setting a precedent because this is only one of dozens or hundreds or maybe thousands of instances where bonds have been issued and these financial institutions are implicated and governments have behaved poorly in ways that have caused a great deal of harm and damages across a population. Um, to have a Republican, the be, for it to be the Republican appointed um, prosecution team that was making these financial charges and then the Democrats who laid off is not exactly the narrative that we're typically fed. Yeah, there's multiple things going on. So I should start with a, an unsexy topic. Uh, maybe you've covered, I don't know. So Flint, like pretty much every uh, major city, uh, they've been full, full, full systems go on gentrification. Mm. So a water crisis does not necessarily help lower like investment into the city. Mm. So pretty early on in this, and, and the last mayor of Flint was on the record with me saying, while she was mayor, real estate developers, some of the biggest uh, donors in Flint, uh, the biggest foundations in Flint were lobbying her to declare the water better, even though it was not better because the water crisis had basically stunted uh, downtown development efforts, you know, bars, restaurants, shopping districts, things like that. So there's that angle where the political motives go to the donors motives and the foundations and the think tanks. They don't want a water crisis. They want to put out data and testing that says the water levels are improving. I broke a few years ago that this last governor, Rick Snyder, his, his environmental department was cooking the data. They were manipulating the data. Mm. Uh, I was supposed to publish that in Newsweek. They killed it literally the day before mm. it was supposed to come out. We could talk for hours about the media's part in this. Um, so well, there's that, yeah, yeah, go ahead though. There's that level. So you have uh, basically Flint, like Detroit and many other cities. They didn't want a water crisis because it was slowing down gentrification efforts. The second thing is, so, and I want to try to explain this so it doesn't confuse anyone. As the criminal investigation was going on, there was also the efforts to settle this civilly. Mm -hmm. uh, if, if your viewers might have seen last year, there was a $600 million civil settlement. Uh, that went to Flint residents, which th that the frontline activists were insulted by because uh, mm -hmm. it's really per child, like less than ten thousand mm. dollars. So um, if if and, and this is from sources uh, both Charlie and I have, if uh, let's say they threw the book at Governor Rick Snyder in voluntary manslaughter, let's say RICO charges against state officials uh, and others. Well, state of Michigan might have had a hard time staying at 600 million. Uh, the liability would probably go significantly, uh, particularly the financial charges. So the state of Michigan had to borrow the money to, to fund this settlement. So there's kind of this basic conflict of interest where on one end you have the state of Michigan, the attorney general's office, prosecuting or going after uh, you know potential criminals in this mm -hmm. event. But on the other end, and it, literally the other end of the attorney general's office, you have them defending state officials and trying to get the lowest possible settlement possible. So that is, I don't know as much political, but a dollars and cents uh, incentive. Well, if if you throw the if you throw the book at the governor, if you throw the book, if you if everything is charged that can be charged, uh, the liability civilly goes significantly up. And then the third thing, and this is just my opinion, I don't have evidence for this, but at the end of the day, Wall Street was involved with this and Democrats and Republicans, we know where their bread is buttered. So JP Morgan, Wells Fargo, they had fraud 
uh, in in before the Flint water crisis, Wells right. Fargo had one of, had one of the biggest fraud settlements in banking history. So the fact of the matter is, uh, it's to me, it's not a coincidence that you know the financial charges went away, and those financial charges could have significantly harmed uh, Wall Street banks because bondholders, investors could have demanded their money back, and the state of Michigan faced significantly more liability if those financial charges go forward. So I think it's not just one thing, there's multiple elements. I can't get in the attorney general's head. I, I, I don't wanna call her, uh, I don't wanna say things that I don't have evidence for, but what I do have evidence for is the first investigation, they were really going aggressively against the governor. Uh, they were really going aggressively against the financial charges. And this current one has really taken its foot off the gas on most of those things. Uh, and it's really the true tragedy. It's it's the people of Flint. They do not they're, they're not getting uh, the financial restitution they deserve. They have not gotten Medicare for all. I don't know if you're I don't know if your audience knows this, but snuck into Obamacare was essentially Medicare for all uh, for um, Libby, Montana, uh, which is 96 percent white. Uh, the senator of Montana, for his vote, demanded that his residents get universal health care because of an asbestos disaster mm. uh, there. People of Flint haven't gotten Medicare for all. That Melissa Mays you mentioned, she's yeah. nearly bankrupt uh, paying for environmental doctors because for these kind of heavy metal poisoning, bacteria from the water, you need specific environmental doctors. Uh, so they, there's been no convictions. The water is still, that's another key part here. The water is still not safe. The media has declared it safe. I've been there 18 times. I could tell you from speaking with residents, Residents are still eight years later getting rashes when they shower, uh, losing hair in the shower. Uh, I've had residents tell me their eyes burn in the shower. Mm -hmm. Anecdotally, I've smelled foul smelling water at people's homes. Mm -hmm. So this is a real disaster. And I think beyond Flint, one of the biggest problems with this, and honestly, one of the biggest sins of this is this was one of the biggest stories that got swept under the rug by the five-year Trump circus. Mm. Um, and that the people that suffered the most are the people of Flint from the media abandoning the story and frankly, the Democratic Party abandoning the story. That's really frustrating, too, because I could see either party playing and I, I know this isn't the point, but kind of weaponizing Flint for its own political gain in a way that would also enter to the benefit of Flint potentially, right? I could see Democrats saying, we're the working class heroes. Here's this uh, a town in industrial decline. Donald Trump says he's a hard hat wearing, uh, you know, anti-NAFTA populist. And, and but we are the ones here that are standing up for the people that were hurt by these trade deals, et cetera. And obviously Donald Trump could have tried to make his own pitch to the town as well. And to have both people in Dutch, uh, abandoning a kind of demographic group that was really pivotal to the 2016 and 2020 election cycles is like doubly demoralizing. Yeah. And honestly, like eventually if I write a book, it'll all be in there. I can't tell you how many times I, I had the goods. I had, uh, you know, documents, uh, evidence of a cover up when I pitched it. I mean, I'll name names. When I pitched it to the New York Times, the Washington Post, the Associated Press, Mother Jones, the Daily Beast, a lot of those outlets literally asked me, is there a connection to the president, Trump? Yeah. Is, is there a connection to Trump? Uh, and I had to say, no. <laughs> you know, this was under a Republican governor at the time, a Democratic president who did next to nothing uh, for the people of Flint. Uh, yeah, except it. for go there and performatively drink water out of a glass. Yeah. But there's another thing about Obama people don't know because he... People focus on the drinking water, which was horrible. Obama would not declare Flint a disaster. Mm. It did not. Flint did not get a federal disaster declaration. And why that's important is a federal disaster de declaration. It you have more access to funds. The Army Corps of Engineers could then go there and dig up those pipes and all those things. Flint was it got a state of emergency. And Obama said, well, I can't declare uh, a, a disaster because it's not like a hurricane or like, you know, a natural disaster kind of thing. So that technocratic semantics really deprived Flint when they needed it most. I mean, the Army Corps of Engineers would have been in, in my opinion, if it was like Ann Arbor or, mm. or the Upper East Side of Manhattan. So that in addition to Obama going there for that uh, drinking, uh, that glass drinking photo op, he failed to do significant 
like policy things that would have greatly helped the people of Flint. But to tell you the truth, Brianna, like not just on Flint, on many other stories that I cover, it it really is an alternative reality that is created by our media. Um, I can't tell you how many times I've been in Flint. You'll figure out just talking to people within a few hours, this is still a disaster, a crisis. And then I would just like go back to the hotel and turn on CNN and they'd be talking about like whatever Trump tweeted at the time or Russia or whatever. Even sometimes in independent media, uh, to be honest, I mean, people talk about the horse race and things like that. Yeah. It's been really difficult. The hardest part for a journalist, like in a normal system, should be breaking the story, not getting people to care about it after the fact. But for me, not that it's easy to break the information, but for me, it's it's been equally as hard, if not more difficult once the stories are out there uh, to get the mainstream media to pick it up, hell, the Detroit Free Press, the Detroit News, the Flint, Michigan's outlets will not cover any of this that we break. So yeah, it's a real media blackout. And at the end of the day, to me, it's not just about Flint. It's, it's just about like, if no one is truly held accountable in Flint, there's the playbook in a city near you. Hey, YouTube. Thanks for watching. Just a reminder that this is a podcast. You can catch an extra premium episode every Monday for $5 a month at patreon.com slash podcast. That's patreon.com slash podcast for $5 a month, an extra episode every week. Additionally, please do consider liking this video, subscribing to this channel. It helps us out. It helps independent media beat the algorithm. We appreciate you. And as always, keep the faith.